video games. One of my favourite pastimes and an ever-growing industry with them becoming more and more popular each year. Known for not only being enjoyable but also a creative medium as can be seen in the Blackout's hit single video games. Which is just true art, uh, I'm sure you'll agree. The creation of video games is a long and expensive process, with care not just being given to the gameplay and the concept, but also to artwork and music, which the latter is what we're going to be looking at today. Now as some of you may know, I'm a musician myself, so I clearly know what's good and what's not good. I'm also incredibly humble. Now I've gone through and perused the internet for some of the worst examples of video game music out there and I've tried my best not to listen to them. So I've just made a list and I'm going to go through them together and we'll see what the hell's going on in video game music. So without further ado, let's go! When I announced I was making this video, I asked some of you at home for recommendations of what games I should cover and this one came up multiple times. This is the first Resident Evil game, and more specifically, the Director's Cut. In 1997, Capcom released Resident Evil Director's Cut, which featured a new rearranged mode, multiple difficulty options and other superficial design revisions. However, the series producer, Shinji Mikami, regretted not updating the soundtrack, so when Resident Evil Director's Cut, Dual Shock Edition was greenlit the following year, to take advantage of the new controller's vibration functions, Capcom commissioned a new symphonic soundtrack to enhance the experience. This is where Mamoru Samurugochi, I think, known as the Japanese Beethoven, comes in. Samurugochi was chosen to replace the original composer's work, but his soundtrack was unusual to say the least. The result was said to be a bizarre and jarring score which clashed with the game's atmosphere, and has also been described as clowns farting by people on the internet, so that's a lot of fun. It is widely regarded as one of the worst soundtracks in video game history. Now this is the interesting part of the story behind this track. Samurugochi turned out to be a complete con man and a fraud, so he claimed at the age of 10 he would be able to play Bach and other classical pieces, and he also claimed he was completely deaf. It turned out he was not completely deaf at all, he'd lied about that and could hear, which meant that they took away his, essentially like his disability, um, thing, his like non-hearing person certificate, and for his whole career, for about 18 years, he'd been commissioning someone called Takashi Nagaki? Takashi Nagaki? I think, who was a music professor and he had been ghostwriting all of his stuff for him and it was Nagaki who exposed that he wasn't deaf but it has to be said that you, he can't be a very good music professor because apparently this song sucks so we're gonna check it out and we're gonna see if it does so let's have a listen shall we so more specifically the track we're listening to is Mansion Basement let's go <laughs> Ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. Doesn't get better. It's one minute, five seconds long. In the director's cut too, if you just got the standard version, you never heard this. You poor sod. Action 52 is a notorious multi cart released in 1991 for the Nintendo Entertainment System featuring a collection of 52 games and a single cartridge. What makes Action 52 interesting is its infamy. The games were often buggy, poorly designed and lacked polish, earning its reputation as one of the worst video game compilations ever created. Despite its poor quality, Action 52 has developed a cult following due to its kitsch appeal, nostalgic value and sheer audacity of its creators, who promised an unprecedented 52 games in one package. The multi-cats notoriety also led to a fascination among retro gaming enthusiasts who appreciate the inadvertent charm of this so bad it's good entertainment value cartridge. But the thing we're here for is the song called Crazy Shuffle on the Action 52. I think this is from a game called Crazy Shuffle on one of the 52 games. And judging by comments on this, it's meant to be incredibly bad. So let's go. Oh. You know what this sounds like? I mean, it's awful. But <clears throat> it sounds like the predecessor to dubstep. It's like the granddad of dubstep. It's like Skrillex from 1991. Okay, yeah, no, this is, okay. That's more annoying than anything. I guarantee that loops for the entire time you're playing that game. Holy shit. Yeah, that's bad. Although it's better than Mansion Basement. Mansion Basement was funnier, so, I don't know. I'll shut up now.
This game is a part of a popular arcade shooter by Capcom, and even at the time was largely seen as passable. But from everything I've read, it was a pretty good game. A lot of people enjoyed it. 1942 only had a total of two songs for its entire 32 levels of the game, and most common was one being the theme tune, which you had to listen to for the entirety of the game, apart from a couple of places. This song has been described as both annoying and grating. 1942, here we go. I think I've played this game before, to be honest. I went to like a retro arcade thing and played it. It was good. 1942, here we go. I, know, I can see what they're going for. Oh, I can't follow it though. Yeah, they're going for like the military drum roll, but it just doesn't sound like that at all. I wonder what it sounds like. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like someone in a supermarket, like, scanning stuff. The Chess Master was a chess simulation developed by The Software Toolworks and published by Mindscape. There are a lot of versions of this game, but the SNES version was released in 1991 and is one of many parts of the game across multiple platforms. From everything I can find online, it seems to be a pretty solid chess simulation. And also, there's people who still play it now. There's pe I've found people on YouTube who were doing things in the game, like the fastest checkmate ever and stuff like that. So, yeah, interesting. This game allows you to play against other players and also the computer, um, but apparently the main theme is quite funny. It's meant to be bad, but uh, not horrendous like uh, Mansion Basement. So, this is the Chess Master. Go! <laughs> It's got a jive to it. It reminds me of Animal Crossing music a little bit. I do like that guy who's just staring at me there. There's all the comments say on this one. This is just on. <laughs> it sounds like the Seinfeld theme waking up. <laughs> I, I actually quite like the Chess Master thing. I'm not gonna lie. Cruising USA is a racing game developed by Midway and released in the Nintendo 64 in 1996. The game is an arcade port of the first title in the Cruising series. It features fast-paced gameplay with players racing across the United States in one of four cars. This game received a bit of a mixed reception at launch, but it seems to be okay. So let's have a listen. Hell yeah! So goofy. I think we should do a cover of this. I don't think it's very lyrically heavy. That's a jam. Why is that on lists of the worst music ever? I actually like that. That's very cheesy, but very campy. But I like that. That's fun. Deadly Premonition is a survival horror game developed by Axis Games and published by Ignition Entertainment. It was released in 2010 for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles. The game is known for its unique blend of horror, mystery and humour, as well as a quirky and often bizarre gameplay mechanics. The track here is called The Red Room Theme and people online tell me that it's got a strange saxophone part in it. Um, I know this game sort of pulls on quite a lot of noir vibes from what I've seen in the past. This is a much older game than... older? Newer? This is a much newer game than the other ones we've seen. It'll be interesting to see how this sounds. It, it won't be 8-bit, hopefully. <laughs> so, alright, let's go. Deadly Premonition Red Room Theme. happening to the saxophone player. It's not as bad now. It sounds like an elephant. This might just be an elephant. Almost. No, that is weird. <laughs> Sounds like he's in 
paid. Stop punching the saxophone player. Extreme Paint Brawl is a first-person shooter developed by Head Games Publishing and released in 1998 for PC. The game features 3D graphics with players navigating through outdoor environments such as forests, deserts and urban areas. There's also a space station for some reason. You tell me. Players can choose from a variety of paintball guns, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. The game also features a variety of power-ups such as increased speed, accuracy and ammo capacity. The game received very bad reviews upon release and was slated with 1 out of 5 stars by most gaming journalists who covered it. From what I can see online, uh, opinions of the game are all very negative, but there is a small cult following for the game. A little one. People who just like punishing themselves. And the song we're listening to is called Song 6. Go. Is that chicken? Alright, I need to stop it. I was completely bewildered by that. Yeah, there's a comment here which calls it Seizure Metal. Yeah, I agree with that. Maybe we should start playing Seizure Metal in my band. Tasmania is a classic platformer game based on the Looney Tunes character Taz the Tasmanian Devil. The game was developed by Sega and released in 1992 for the Sega Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive outside of North America. In Tasmania, players control Taz as he navigates through various levels in the Australian outback. The game features side-scrolling platforming, with Taz being able to run, jump, spin his way through obstacles. Taz's signature spin attack is used to defeat enemies and even break certain blocks. The game has a total of seven worlds, each with five levels, plus a final boss level. The levels are filled with Looney Tunes charm, featuring cameos from other characters like Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and Porky Pig. Now, when I was researching this game, because I've never played Tasmania, I've never even seen Tasmania before, but I found an article thing which somebody said it features Taz's favourite food, bananas. Since when has Taz's favourite food been bananas? Doesn't he just eat anything? Isn't that his shtick? That he just eats and destroys everything? Um, is that just me? Leave a comment. Leave a comment. Did you know his favourite food is bananas? Or is this person just wrong and it's not bananas? I have no idea. Okay, so the video I've found for this soundtrack is quite long because it's just like an entire game playing 4K. So let's just listen to the first track and skip through. Oh, is that a song senses? Oh, what was that? I'm sure I've seen a Flintstones game with the same music somewhere. Oh, God. Alright, okay, 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 okay. I'm stopping that. That's horrendous. That's hor Holy hell. We'll skip through. It's like halfway through. It's just nonsense. There's no like. I will say the first track, it's like they had the de -de 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 thing going for it. Like he knew what he was doing there, but then it just completely lost it. And that sound it makes when the thing goes up, awful. Wow. I'm just sad now. Rygar is a classic action adventure game developed by Tecmo and released. Released? Released? in 1987 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. In Rygar, you play as the titular hero Rygar, a legendary warrior tasked with defeating the evil king Lygar, really, and his minions to save the world of Argul. Rygar is an action-adventure game with a mix of platforming, exploration, and combat elements. You control Rygar as he navigates through various environments, including forests, caves, and ancient ruins. The track we're listening to today, though, is called Dorigo's Palace. Three, two, one, Dorigo. It's 35 seconds long, my old track. It's 
going to drop in a minute. It's not going to drop, is it? It's just going to... What was that? Does that really count as a song? These aren't even funny anymore, they're just sad. San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing is a racing game developed by Atari Games and published by Midway. Released for the N64 in November 1997, the game features 8 unique race cars and 6 different tracks, with the ability to learn shortcuts and alternate routes. The game has a 2 player mode where you and a friend can race against each other, along with 4 other computer controlled opponents for a total of 6 races on the track at once. This game was well received and is still regarded as a very good racing game for the uh, period, and it's a cult classic. The song we're here to hear is called Rave Rush. Rave Rush. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> the pitch shift. It's like somebody who doesn't know what rave music is explained what it is to somebody who didn't understand him properly and then that guy tried to make rave music. Oh, a bit bass. Crazy Bus is an arcade game developed by Sega and released in 1989. This is maybe one of the most hated games I've researched. Everyone hates Crazy Bus. There is essentially no gameplay to the game as you try to control a bus with a D-pad and that's about it. There's no real replay value at all to this game from what I've read and from what I've seen. Crazy Bus has made multiple lists placing it as maybe one of the worst games ever made. I've saved the best for last I think judging by reactions online. Anyway, Crazy Bus, go. What? Oh, I accidentally clicked off Crazy Bus. I'm saved. <laughs> Back in. You get thrown in a CIA prison cell and they're torturing you, so they play this for 10 hours. What is going on? It's 2 minutes 35 long. That's enough of that for one day, I think. Uh, Thank you for watching, and I'm sorry for subjecting you to that. That was uh, really something. I hope your eardrums are intact after all this, and I look forward to seeing you in the next.